We're on. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is another episode of the Backyard Preacher Podcast. No, this is not. This is not. Let me warn you. This is not your mother's religious program. Although we are a religious program, this is not TBN. I am not going to ask you for your money. I don't want your money. Please give it to the guy on the side of the road with a sign because uh, he probably doesn't have health insurance and he needs the money for booze tonight. I don't know. All I know is uh, the Backyard Preacher funds itself. Thank you very much. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit about a new funding strategy that I think ministry should, well, it's a risky funding strategy, but it's a funding strategy that I'm going to use as the Backyard Preacher that I think is going to be a catalyst for this ministry. Uh, so what's been going on in the world lately? Not not not, not much. Uh, we but we are moving. Uh, I have a mess. You probably have not seen the another episode in like over a week. And the reason why is I am moving out of this house, and I'm going to be fully moved out of this house this week. Moving from this wonderful little cottage, 750 square foot or so, and to a beautiful, magnificent home. Uh, I'd say it's about 45 minutes from here, but we're just like tripling down, tripling up and it's going to be great. going to be a lot more room. So the Backyard Preacher Podcast headquarters is moving out of Davenport, leaving Davenport behind, uh, which, hey, I do what you got to do sometimes. And hopefully in about a year or so, we're going to leave Iowa behind and head to Florida. That's the plan. But this is the plan right now. I was reading and meditating last night and this something from my gut, something from inside of me, from inside my soul kind of crept up and I want to pull it up here. Also, I want to give a shout out. I just got this awesome, amazing phone. This is the... Uh, S9 Plus. This thing is awesome. Just awesome. You gotta get your hands on this thing. You know, I had the I had the S7 and the S7 is great, but I was I didn't want to get the S8 root right away. So I was like, how oh, you know how it is when you are about to uh, upgrade phones, you know, you're still paying on a phone and blah blah blah. So I decided to go ahead and upgrade to the S9 Plus. This is going to be perfect for me sitting on the beach. Uh, I can turn this bad boy into a hotspot where you can with your other phones and trade penny stocks because that's my new gig now. I'm a penny stock trader. Uh, and hopefully, like I was saying about the financial situation, that's what I'm going to be using as my catalyst to uh, continue on with the backyard preacher without having to work a 40 hour a week day job. It just gets in the way of really what my passions are and what I want to do to provide excellent service for my listeners. This thing's amazing. But we will go to my page, natesproke.com. Make sure you check out natesproke.com because it's important. All right, if I can figure out what I'm doing here. If my listeners who are listening to this on iTunes or whatever are wondering why I'm talking the way I'm talking, it's because I'm actually streaming live now. We're, we're giving this a try to see how it works. The past few episodes, we've been streaming live. I need to go to view site once. In Christianity, in all religion, we have this faith, this Faith, and we, we're all told that we need to be people of faith. Uh, and this is not just for Christianity, it's for most all religion, unless you're an atheist. But atheism really can be defined as a religion if you really want to get to the heart of it. You got to have faith that nothing exists, too. And also, you know what I mean? So many people talk about blind faith, that if you follow a religion, religion such as mine, such as Christianity, you're following a blind faith, 
and that you don't know, you don't have any concrete evidence, per se, about your faith. I am going to prove you wrong. And I'm going to prove you wrong today. And I'm going to use what God has imparted in me. I feel is spiritually imparted into me. And what I feel, I have verses here from the text that is going to show you how you can be confident in your faith. Because faith is not blind. And you can get the text that I'm going to read from from natesprout.com, N-A-T-E-S-P-R-O-T-T dot com. Faith is not blind. Faith is never blind, as many often think of religion. Faith is also not irrational self-confidence, or that which is in possession of the gullible followers of every celebrity preacher within a religion. We all know those. We all know those celebrity preachers. You all know of those preachers who come to a church, start a big ministry, and they, other people leave every other church around, and they go follow this charismatic, charismatic person because, oh, this is where it's at, by golly. This is the spot for me. And so you create this mega church mentality where everybody wants to go see Joel Osteen. And that's fine. Whatever. I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying. It just, everyone wants to try to, we're, we're very predictable people. It's very predictable. We, we like the charisma. We like, you know, the whole uppity beat and just let's go. And that's fine. That's good. We need catalysts to keep things going. We need that. You know, I'm not necessarily against that. I'm only against that when it, it kind of hurts other churches, per se, and it kind of hurts other ministries. Uh, if you're in a ministry, continue in that ministry. Don't just leave because the next big thing is coming along. Because really, the next big thing is right in here. The next big thing is in you. You are the next big thing. The next big thing only starts with you and inside of you. And when you're on fire, you don't need anybody else to be on fire. You don't need the next fiery televangelist. You don't need the guy on TV. You just don't. You need you. You need to figure out how to get yourself in order so you don't have to be chasing the, 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 the coattails of any other minister out there because you are the person that knows yourself more than anybody else. So we don't need that. See, those who follow a false faith, a faith that is weak and that leaves, like leaves blown in the wind, following anything and everything that feeds the emotions. Faith is not emotional. Faith has nothing to do with emotions. You can't work faith up. You can work out your salvation, and that's a mystery, just like faith is a mystery. A lot of people think we can work, build the faith up. No. We can pray for faith. We can pray for faith. Because I'm going to show you that you can't create the faith yourself. It's a gift from God that no man should boast. You being able to believe in Jesus, you being able to believe in your religion, is a gift from God because you can't boast about it because there's many people that do not have, and I, I talk to people every day that do not have the ability to believe in God. They do not have the ability to believe in the supernatural. They do not have it within inside them. If they get it, then they're going to get it from God. They're not going to be able to conjure it up themselves. Let me just keep turning off. So, okay. But let me digress just a moment. Faith, no doubt, is a self confidence. It is a type of self confidence. Obviously, when you have faith in something, you're obviously self confident about it. That said, 
It is a self-confidence that is only attained within the elimination of self. The Apostle Paul talked a lot about you must crucify your flesh. Jesus talked about being able to carry your own cross, to be able to crucify yourself. Basically putting yourself down, putting yourself to death. In meditation, when we meditate, we eliminate our thoughts and our brain. We eliminate these things so that the Spirit can speak to us. We eliminate all our surroundings. We, we let go of self so that self can be filled. And it's only after we try this elimination of self, which can take often years and years and years. I, I will tell you this, any person that claims to be enlightened, because I'm not enlightened, I highly doubt, I highly question, I would like to study under them for a while or see what they're doing before I say, yeah, that, that person's enlightened because I've never seen, I've never, I don't know. Other than there may be a few people I'll say, or I don't know any enlightened people. I don't. So I highly doubt it when I say think that a person's enlightened to the point that Jesus or Buddha uh, was enlightened. That said, self-confidence that is only attained when the self is eliminated in the abyss. The abyss, the crossing over into the mind of God. The place in which all things Oh, this phone, I got it. All things become everything, and everything becomes nothing. It's like when scientists look at uh, things on the quantum level, when you talk about quantum entanglement, when you talk about uh, uh, two different atoms being in the pl two different places at the different times. Um, I think they call that... Um, it's not quantum entanglement, it's superpositioning. When they talk about superpositioning, where all things become possible and all things, all things can become possible. Everything is, oh man, I'm screwing up my words here. Where everything, and yet everything is nothing. All things become everything and everything is nothing. Yes, this, is where faith is found. Faith is found in this mysterious form, this mysterious abyss that we must cross. And that kind of contradicts with what I'm saying is that how faith is not blind, yet at the same time, it is in a sense when you finally decide that you are eliminating self. But it's so concrete by then, when you've eliminated self, it's so concrete that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is not blind, that it's going somewhere. Blind faith is not faith at all because you already know once you reach this level. Faith is a gift that which no one can conjure up, like I said. No one can conjure up faith. It is granted to us by God a miracle. Who can eliminate the self, though? Like I said, I've never seen an enlightened person. I don't know of any enlightened people. I've never lived around enlightened people. I've known people who say they're enlightened. I've even said, man, I feel kind of enlightened today. I feel knowledgeable today. And when this paragraph that I wrote came to me that you can find on natesbroke.com, when it came to me, I felt enlightened, but it only lasted for a brief period of time. Who can possess the self-confidence needed for self for such elimination? None can claim such a feat, and in this we find the mystery. Jesus did it. He found self, so much self-elimination that he was able to rise again. That we put our burdens upon him. But we within ourselves, some of us have different levels and they go up and down, they fluctuate. Like I'm, I was telling you that I, 
I'm starting to, I'm learning how to trade stocks and I'm actually doing pretty well. I'm, I'm, I really am. Uh, and but they go up and down constantly. I'm learning all this lingo from other people and it's kind of fun. And hopefully I'll be able to quit my day job and be able to do that just a couple hours a day and make, you know, a couple hundred dollars a day just doing that. Awesome. Awesome. Maybe I'll be able to put out videos about that. I don't know. But that's not my main point for ministry. What I'm really trying to say here is that it's a mystery. And we get boggled down with this whole idea of, of having faith, and yet, because that's that's like the centerpiece of, of religion, is faith and what we can't see, and we believe what we can't see, and, and it's difficult for people, but you got to understand, it, it, it's impossible for people to really grasp this whole thing when they haven't been given it. So let's first go to the definition of faith here. And we're going to work out of the Bible a little bit. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews 11.1. 1. The band. Faith in action. This is a great, great... Uh, Hebrews 11 just an awesome inspirational chapter, no matter what. Uh, they really knew their stuff, and they just, this was, if you want to read a real self-motivating chapter, this is it. Hebrews 11. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. But, here we go. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for. The assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. This is what the ancients were commended for. Now we're calling these people ancients. This is 2,000 years ago. But here they're talking about thousands of years past. This is what the ancients were commended for. So they're going off of the ancients here and their faith. And specifically, more likely, talking about, well, all the way back as far as Cain and Abel. But we're going to go back only as far as Abraham. So faith, let's repeat it again. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and insurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. So let's go all the way back to Genesis. Genesis chapter 15, 6. 15, 6. Abraham believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Now, before that, let's look at this. Verse 5. God's talking to Abraham. However, he's talking to him. I don't know if he's talking to him verbally. I don't know if he's talking to him with, you know, some inner voice of some sorts. But he, he took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed, if indeed you can count them. Almost like a, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. In verse 6, Abraham believed the Lord. So, you know, if it was just this inner self talking to him, if it was this inner self talking to him and he said, wow, I'm looking up at the stars in the sky. And next thing you know, he's thinking, I believe. I believe that these things are going to come to pass, that my offspring is going to be like the sand of the sea, the stars of the sky. See, you probably have something in your life right now that is seems stinking near impossible. But you know what? You take that inner voice inside of you and you believe that it's you believe that it is you are able, that it is able to come to pass because you have a supernatural, powerful, working God on your side. And guess what? Abraham believed the Lord and credited to him as righteousness. When you have that inner voice, that's something telling you and you believe that this is God speaking to you and you believe that right now, that God is telling you this, and you say, you look up and say, I believe it's going to happen. 
that's faith. That's faith. And that's going to accredit to you righteousness. And it's going to come about. And it may not come about today, tomorrow, or the next day, but it will. It didn't come about the day that Abraham looked up at the sky. It took a lot many years later, but it came about. It came about. Change subject, we're not changing the subject. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 8. I'm feeding you a lot of scripture, but that's good. That's real good. Ephesians 2 8. And this is what's talking about how this is not of yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Faith is not of yourself. So you can't blame when you're trying to convince somebody that when you're trying to convince somebody to be a Christian, when you're trying to convince somebody, and I don't proselytize, okay? I don't proselytize. But say you're trying to talk with somebody over about being, you know, I used to consider myself an evangelist. I do kind of now, but an evangelist that preaches from the context of if you want to believe, believe. If you don't, don't. Because I can't make you believe anything. I can't force anything upon you. Jesus says choose. I don't force. Forcing is not what God intended. He intended for you to decide. Because you're only going to decide if you've been given the faith to decide. But Ephesians 2 8 plainly speaks that. The apostle writes, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself, it is a gift from God, not by works that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And this coming up here, because before I finish, I want to let you know that we can relax in our faith. If you have faith, if you possess faith, you can relax in your faith. You don't have to worry about always doing, 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 doing. Because you can't create faith. You can't conjure up faith. It is something that's already given to you, something that you're already blessed with by the grace of God, knowing that you are a sinful human being and knowing that only by the grace of God can we be anything at all. Only by the grace of God. Many, many churches are pharisaical, are like the Pharisees, like the burden people. Burden people down with the whole idea that we have to work ourselves into heaven. Now, they'll tell you that they don't believe that. They'll say, and we can do it ourselves. I, I've done it. I'm sure you've done it. I'm, I'm sure most Christians have. We find ourselves in this works attitude. Because if we turn to James, and I love the book of James, but James is controversial on this fact and how contradictory he, it seems on the surface anyway. Now, if you do some hermeneutics on this, you can see where James and Paul are pretty much on the same page. At least you can... You can exegize that out to work. Well, you can make anything work, really, if you really want to. You can twist this all around to make anything work for you. Uh, but we we believe that it's really, they're probably were on the same page. But here's where a lot of people get confused. 218, faith, without James 218, he says, but someone will say that you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe, and they shudder. Basically saying, okay, some people are taking this way too far out of touch. You believe in God, but yet, what do you, what, what's backing it up? That you, okay, you believe in God. You believe there's something out there. Like, just like being agnostic. You believe in God, but you're not following God. You're not trying to do anything different in your life. So do you really have faith? Do you really believe in God? And 
I think a lot of churches get it kind of confused where we they have tried to place an emphasis on works of trying to be a certain way. I don't mean to pick on like the holiness movement, but you'll see, you know, the women in their long dresses and buns and the guys always wearing suits to church and, you know, this whole idea of, of, of a works mentality. You know, when I was growing up, God bless my grandma's soul. Um, you know, we couldn't watch TV on Sundays. We couldn't work on Sundays, but we would go out to eat after the church. Forget the guys in the back room cooking for us. You know, I never understood that. As I got older, I thought it was hilarious. Uh, but, you know, my grandmother came from a kind of, she didn't come from a church, from a denomination that was about works, but it turned into that. And we can find ourselves turning ourselves into that where, you know, oh, I can't miss a day of, of, of church on Sunday. Or, oh, I can't uh, go to a bar for Pete's sakes because God forbid if someone sees me in here, I'm supposed to be a Christian. You are a Christian. <laughs> I mean, come on. You are a Christian. Be real. And so many times people are turned off by the faith because people are just trying to be fake. You know, I come out of a fundamentalist movement. Now I'm a progressive Christian minister. So I understand how it is to be fundamental and have these verses kind of taken out of context from what I believe uh, and to be toxic in your life. And it can kind of turn into, if not careful, into an almost religious PTSD that can form in your life. I believe I suffer from a religious PTSD, uh, but I am slowly working myself out of it. And I give props to the PCA, the Progressive Christian Alliance, uh, excellent denomination. Uh, I really have felt bad that I did not plant a church here in the Quad Cities, but I don't feel bad because I guess that wasn't God's calling upon me at the time, and maybe God's calling upon me for a short period of time to bring a progressive Christian alliance type organization to where we're moving to in Mechanicsville, Iowa, just a small little town of like 1,500 people, uh, and maybe when I head down to Florida. You know, this is a strong movement. It's a strong movement. Progressive Christianity is a strong movement. We're, we're awakening. We're waking up. We're allowing people to think for themselves. We're allowing people to be free thinkers. We're allowing people to read this book and interpret it the way they want to interpret. And you not have to necessarily have a master's degree or a doctorate to actually be able to preach this text. Now, I'm not saying that it's not a bad thing. I have a master's. I'm currently working on a doctorate. But you don't have to. You absolutely don't have to. You can decide. You choose. You decide. And if you need faith, if you want faith, ask for it. Pray for it. Look for it. Seek it out. And I guarantee you this. If you want faith, faith will find you. God is generous in giving faith. But you got to ask for it. Sometimes people are just giving it. Sometimes people are curious and like, man, I don't believe in God. I used to, maybe. But what do I do? Well, ask for it. Ask for faith. God, show me. You won't be disappointed. Anyway, this is going to be the last episode of the Backyard Preacher Podcast in Davenport, Iowa, as far as I know. Unless we do like some special or something. Or I'm on another podcast. Uh, I got some friends here in uh, the area who are doing who do a podcast. I was invited on. I don't know when we're gonna work that out. Uh, but this is gonna probably 99%. This is gonna be the last podcast in Davenport because I'm moving. If I was to show you and look around this room, there's boxes and stuff. Most of the stuff's already moved out. Uh, just the essential things are here at the moment. Uh, that being said, let's pray. God, thank you. I praise you. I thank you, Lord. I ask that you bless my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that we would receive faith, Lord, that you would impart faith upon us if we so wish it. I wish it even more so, especially as this move takes place, and especially as we plan on moving 
down south of Florida. Lord, that you would work things out, Lord. That you would work things out for this ministry as well, Lord. That we can be totally self-sufficient, never asking for a dime, not having to work day jobs, but being able to fully invest into the ministry without ever having to ask for any money. That's what it should be all about. That's when we can give, we can give back, we can do all kinds of great things to just give and not have to worry about incoming money. If incoming money is going to come, we can automatically just give that away. We can just give it away and not putting it in anyone's pockets. Just have it straight for ministry. Ministry purpose is only 100%. Anything that goes into anyone's pockets is done through business. Anyway, this is the 131st episode of the Backyard Preacher Podcast. Have faith. Have faith in us. We're going to do all right. We're going to be okay. And I will see you next time in Mechanicsville, Iowa, for the 132nd episode of the Backyard Preacher Podcast. Thank you for listening. This has been your irreverent Reverend Nate Sproke. I'll talk to you later.